Hey folks, real quick, I just wanted to make another video for some common questions that I see on the forums and on social media around how to achieve back focus with the Edge HD optics from Celestrum. So in this configuration, I'm using, again, a really common configuration with the ZWO off-axis guider, a ZWO camera, and the uh, 0.7X reducer. So you can use the same process to image at F10 without the reducer, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But just a quick parts list here. We got, this is the back of the OTA. You have your reducer. This is a Starizona T adapter, ZWO off-axis guider, ZWO filter drawer, two inch filter drawer, the 11 millimeter spacer that comes with the camera, and your ASI camera. This is a 294MC Pro. On the off-axis guider side, I have the ZWO helical focuser and one of the mini cameras. This is a ASI 174 uh, monochrome camera. So the back focus for the edge optics is in the manual, which I'll put the link in the description below. You need 133.5 millimeters to image at F10. And with the reducer, it's 105. It's actually, I don't believe it's in the scope manual. I believe it's in the reducer manual. Um, either way, um, when I have the reducer on here. So with this star zoner T adapter, that's 50 millimeters. So then the easy part about that is ZWO posts all the different permutations to reach 55 millimeters back focus for a total of 105. So in this case, because I'm using their off axis guider, you have, it's, I think this is like 21 or 29. You have the filter drawer and the 11 millimeter spacer that comes with the camera. And this, this spacer is really the only way you can connect these two. So this gives me my 55 for a total of 105. The tough part is really just getting the guide camera in focus on the off-axis guider. And the solution I found for that, and this is another super common question, is if you to make sure you take the five millimeter spacer off here, and if you have the helical focuser, it actually makes it easy uh, to replace the camera because everything stays, stays put. You don't have to slide the camera up and down, but you have to have 105 millimeters from here to here kind of in an L shape, just like you have to have a 105 millimeters here. So in this case, if you sync the mini version of the camera all the way down inside the helical focuser, back it out to about 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 uh, depending on the focus point of your um, OTA, you'll be right there at that 105. If you're using the, um, the regular connector here, the regular sleeve uh, for the camera, uh, you're going to be looking for about 16 and a half millimeters or so. So that's how you connect all this stuff together. It's actually super, super simple. I would recommend the Starzona T adapter over the Celestron one, particularly if you're using this uh, ZWO off axis guider, because there's no shoulder on the Celestron one, because you have to use a, an adapter, a ring adapter here to uh, make sure the threads match up. And there's no shoulder for that ring adapter to catch on. Uh, so you're actually snugging the T adapter up to the stalk inside the OAG. So you don't wanna necessarily push that stalk in or cause any issues and then you can actually adjust it. So that's really all there is to this. Uh, super common question. Again, if you wanted to image at F10, you're removing this reducer. Uh, both the Starzona and Celestron adapters come with another um, 28 and a half millimeter spacer. I think it's 28 and a half millimeters that you just, when it comes together, you take it off if you're going to use the um, reducer. So just put that spacer on that could, gives you uh, your, what you need to reach 133.5 or 133 and you're good to go from there. Uh, and if you notice, I have the, the EF on here, the electronic autom automatic focuser. Um, I will um, post some tips here on that, on installing that here after, after this part. Hey folks, just real quick, I promised some of those Eve settings. Um, so Astro Blender has a really good tutorial on how to physically install the Eve and get it set up. In particular, when using the ASI Air Pro, there's a couple of tips that I believe have popped up in some of his comments that I had to kind of find through trial and error when I was installing my EVE um, on the Edge HD. So watch this video for the full install. A couple of tips here though, that make life a lot easier for you.
the first tip is to focus the OTA first. So the step size, the max step size for the EF is about 60,000 steps. On the SCT itself, on the Edge HD, the focuser will rotate like 46 full rotations. And that equates out to something like 400,000 steps on the step size. So the EF doesn't quite have the step size to actually go through that full range of focus options. So the best thing to do is focus the OTA first, then install your EF. <clears throat> Once it's focused and you install the EF, what you can do is inside the ASI Air Pro, go to this position info, hit the edit button. And obviously my focuser is not connected. I just have the ASI Air Pro kind of stuck on my desk here. Uh, but go in here and edit that and make it 30,000. So since you're already focused, you're going to set the middle of that 60,000 range by setting this to 30,000. Uh, a lot of people have success by turning off the motor reverse. It actually works either way. Uh, it just determines, I think, which way the motor goes when it's going to focus. So you can turn that off. That's how I have it here. <clears throat> and on auto autofocus, uh, you can reset this uh, exposure to however long you want. It's defaulted to one right now because I don't have the EVE connected, but I usually leave it at three to five seconds depending on the filter. And on the Celestron Edge, I have the step size at 50. So start there. Don't go too small because you do need so much uh, kind of distance on rotating the focuser in order to get make a significant change for uh, the autofocus routine to work. So this is generally how I have my stuff set up every two degrees change every two hours or so. Uh, and before I, uh, after a meridian flip, but the real trick is to make sure the OTA is focused first, set this at 30,000. And then when you run your autofocus routine, you're right in the general area of focus. The autofocuser can do its thing and it's not really hunting for uh, a focus point where you can actually see anything. As we all know, if you've been involved in astrophotography for any point of time, the focus point for actually seeing something uh, through your scope is very, very small. So those tips will really help. I believe I have all these steps kind of set at their default state. That works just fine for me. As I said, the real trick, focus first, set it at 30,000 and run it from there. Okay. Awesome. Hope that helps.